Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, all the way from Sydney, Dave the Happy Singer! Woo! Oh yeah! Dave the Happy Singer in the house! Canberra! I'm not kidding, I don't talk about that. I'm Dave from DaveTheHappySinger.com, um, and I live in Sydney, and it's very nice to be here at Barcamp. And I just want to say congratulations to everybody today because I've been to a bar camp the whole day and I've not heard the word Bitcoin once. That was just <laughs> incredible restraint. I can't believe that it's not just been like every room has just been virtual currencies in the future. Um, so well done. Very little politics talk as well, which I, I, I wasn't sure what to expect from Canberra because it's the heart of the nation's democracy. I know it's just everybody in Canberra is just sick of the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Very heavily Gov 2.0 for a couple It was quite, months. yeah. But that's a bit more kind of policy and running, running things, you know. Um, but um, I don't, because I've only been in Australia for five years, so I don't really understand Australian politics yet. Um, because, that's okay, not. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I don't understand how you can remotely call a voting system that's got a ballot paper a mile long preferential. I mean, <laughs> surely just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I'm not even allowed to vote, that's weird, because I, you know, I pay my taxes at the same rate as everybody else, but I don't get a say in how it's spent, so it's definitely not my fault. <laughs> um, but no, it's, I'm, I'm not going to talk about politics too much, because it is a bit confusing to me in Australia. In fact, everything in Australia to do with politics that I understand can be summed up by the words Harold Holt Memorial Swimming Centre. You know, Harold Holt, he went for a long swim and never came back, drowned. There is a swimming pool in Glen Iris in Melbourne called the Harold Holt Memorial Swimming Pool. And that sums up Australian politics perfectly for me. And that, I've just decided to stop learning about it after I've heard that because nothing can beat that. Okay. So I'd like to talk about an entirely different kind of nonsense. Um, namely, supplementary, complementary and alternative medicines. Um, better known by their acronym, SCAMS. Okay. Now, there's lots, there's lots and there's all kinds of things because you can make so much money. Um, defrauding global people with this. So there's all these different types that emerge, and they all sound all oh, exciting, like chiropractic. Now that's not, uh, you know, a bit of massage is fine, you know, osteopathy, fine. But chiropractic in its original form was this idea that no matter what's wrong with you, no matter what kind of ailment you've got, whether you've got a cold or anything like that, it's caused by these mythical subluxations which are fixed by adjusting your spine. So you can, these you know, the, the old school traditional chiropractors actually believe they can cure the cold by manipulating the spine. And this is dangerous. There are people in the UK who've been trying to cure colic in babies by manipulating that child's spine. There was one here in Australia, a child, you know, had a spinal injury because a baby was taken for this entirely pointless, unscientific intervention by a chiropractor. But by far, my favourite modality, they're called them modalities, the, my favourite modality of supplementary, complementary, or alternative medicine is homeopathy. Now, you're all intelligent and well read. You've probably got a vague idea of what homeopathy is. Some people think it's like herbal medicine. No, that's at least got a bit of sense to it, you know. Um, but no, homeopathy is is just this wonderful magic. It's not ancient and traditional. It was invented from whole cloth in the 18th century by a German guy called Samuel Hahnemann. And I'm going to demonstrate. It basically works on three principles, and I'm going to explain with a live demonstration how it works, and I'm going to make a homeopathic remedy live in this room on the internet. Um, so, first of all, you need to have um, a, a basis for your remedy. And the first principle is extreme dilution. You take this basis, um, I'm going to use a pour to middling Molo, and you dilute it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pour myself a glass of the port to middling Merlot. This isn't part of the um, remedy. And then what you do is you take a drop of this, put it in here, and then you take precisely 100 drops of water. Okay? And you, you mix them all around. And that's called 1C, C being the Roman numeral for 100, that's a 1C dilution of port to middling Merlot. Okay? Then what you do is, you take a drop of this 1C solution, get rid of the rest, put that 1C solution back in here, add another exact 100 drops of water, 
mix it around. That's a 2C dilution. Okay? Now that's not that's not um, a 1 to 200 dilution. Maths fans will know it. This is 100 times 100. This is 1 to 100 squared, which is a lot. Okay? But uh, they keep doing this. So if you dilute then that another 100 times, you get a 3C solution. Some of these dilutions go up to 200C. Now I want to put this into context. When I make a 200C dilution of port and middling Merlot, for there to be one single molecule of this Merlot to be left in here, you would need as many molecules of water as there are, not in one universe, not in 10 universes, but in 1 times 10 to the power of 140 universes. That's the ratio of Shiraz molecules to water molecules that will be left in a 200C dilution. So the, the chances, the probability of any one of those Shiraz molecules making it into a 200C dilution amongst all the water you've used is so close to zero, you may as well call it zero. But of course, of course, you can't just dilute something like that to, to make a magic remedy work. That would be ridiculous. It would be laughable. Every time a bit fell off a tree into a river, our waterways would suddenly be polluted by magic pharmaceuticals. No, of course, you can't, just, you can't just dilute things to make medicine. No, you've got to bang it on a book. Okay? Because the second principle of homeopathy is called succussion. They take this extreme dilution and they bang it in a special way on a book. Now, originally, Zabu and Hahnemann had this um, kind of a, a, a leather paddle that he used specifically for this uh, succussion thing. He, he had this leather paddle. It looked very much like the sort of thing you might buy at an adult shop. Um, but he had, it for, for, he had it for making alternative medicine. Well, at least that's what I would have told my wife. If she, Samuel, Samuel, was machst du da mit diesem Sex toy? Oh, ach, mein Scheiß! Ich mache alternative medicine. Um, at least that, that, that's what I would have done if I was Samuel Hallman. So what you do is once you've made your, your extreme dilution, much more extreme than that, yeah, you um, you've got to you've got to bang it on your sex toy or your book. Lots of homeopaths like to use a leather-bound Bible, presumably because they want extra magic in there. You know, I've done this experiment before using uh, Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard, and it works just as well. Um, so, that's the second principle, succussion. You take extreme dilution, and you bang it, and that's how you make your magic. The other final point is this idea of like cures like. And the idea is that the thing that you're trying to, the thing that you use to, your, to create your remedy produces the same kind of symptoms in its pure form that you're trying to cure. There's a tree called Nux vomica, and as you can probably guess by its name, it makes you vomit. It causes nausea. But a homeopath would take Nux vomica, dilute it, and create an anti-nausea medication with that. A supposed anti-nausea medication. It's, um, so when you dilute it, it kind of reverses its effect. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to create a homeopathic cure to, to cure drowning, you'd just get some water, which causes drowning, dilute it in a whole bunch of water, keep diluting it until there's no water left in the water. Okay, so drowning is probably the one thing you can't cure with homeopathy. Um, uh, maybe if you could, Harold Holt would still be with us. But, um, come on, it's better, it tastes better. <laughs> So the three principles of homeopathy are extreme dilution, like cures like, and uh, succussion. And you put that all together, and that's homeopathy. Um, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. But some people take this even further. There's this thing called biodynamic farming. Biodynamic farming is not organic farming. That at least is, again, like herbal medicine, there's a shred of kind of sense to it. Biodynamic farming is just absolutely crazy. With biodynamic farming, you take some cow manure, stick it into a cow hall, then you bury it in a strategic part of your farm. Okay? Strategic because it's based on the position of the stars. It's done by astrology. The choice of where to bury this um, horn full of manure is done via astrology. And you leave it there for a season, and then you dig it up, you dilute it homeopathically, 
and then you spread it on your crops, and it makes your crops spread really well. Now just think about this for a second. This is homeopathy, multiplied by horoscopes, multiplied by literal bullshit. It's 3C nonsense, okay? It's, it's incredible, and people still do this. So I thought, you know, this, this is rampant. People are making money with this biodynamic farming. And they're charging an extra five bucks a bottle for biodynamically farmed vines in your, in your, your wine. And, uh, you know, chiropractors are breaking babies' necks. And uh, homeopathy, homeopaths are literally selling water for ten bucks a little vial. Um, so I thought, well, what can I do? Because I'm, I'm just a guy with a, a, a blog and a moderately popular podcast. Um, and I thought, I don't know how I can possibly combat this dreadful industry, so I thought, I know what I'll do, I'll parody it, that's the thing. Parody, everybody loves a bit of a parody, that's, that's, uh, that's defeated every bullshit. And so I thought, I'll make up my own alternative medicine, I'll make up my own modality. And I thought, what I'll do is I'll take the very best bits of chiropractic, and I'll take the very best bits of homeopathy, and I'll mix them together. And I invented homeopractic. It's where you manipulate someone's spine, but the manipulation is so diluted that you don't actually touch them. You just wave your hands over their spine. And you know what? They've already done it. It's called applied kinesiology, or <laughs> its other name is therapeutic touch. A modality where you don't actually touch anything is called um, therapeutic touch, or to give it its full name, non-contact therapeutic touch. And it's literally just waving your hands over people. So, uh, that's homeopathy. It's nonsense. It doesn't work. There's no reason it should work. There's no evidence that it works. And if it were to work, we would have to radically rethink a lot of the things that we know about science. Um, so, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but I hope you've uh, had some fun, because I put some jokes in it. <laughs>